Welcome to this talk on assessing the intonation style of speakers with autism spectrum disorder. Presented by myself, Simon Werle, on behalf also of my co-authors Francesco Cangemi, Harriet Hanekamp, Kai Vogelei and Martin Greis. Here's an outline of the talk. Uh, first, I'll give you some background of what we do and do not know about intonation in autism spectrum disorder or ASD. Uh, some notes on methods and measurements, those of previous studies and what we um, did in this study. Uh, I'll show you our data and results before summing up briefly. So before I'll get to the state of our knowledge about intonation in ASD, um, we'll start with a couple of examples of intonation produced by two female speakers diagnosed with ASD. Uh, these two examples are not part of our corpus, which is in German. The examples are in uh, Swedish and American English, respectively. I'll play you the first one now. I see things very much white. Och de flesta säger att ja, det gör ingenting om man gör lite så. Det, ingenting är svartvitt. Okay, that was uh, Greta Thunberg, who you will have heard of. And here is the second example. We've got to work on developing all these different kinds of minds. And one of the things that's driving me really crazy is I travel around and I do autism meetings. Okay, and this example from English, that's by Temple Grandin, um, American autism advocate. We'll get back to these examples in the end. For now, it's just to get an impression and you can think, you know, if you felt they were quite similar and intonation still quite different. Um, you may have felt they're perfectly ordinary sounding or maybe that they're somehow odd. If you have some kind of um, impression of oddness, that's in line with pretty much all we know about this. Um, and also in um, as an element of diagnosis of ASD, oddness of intonation is something uh, that is mentioned. Of course, that's quite a vague notion and we don't really know specifically um, how we can characterize the style or styles of intonation in autism spectrum disorder. So the findings in the literature that we have um, are few and they're rather contradictory. So there are claims that intonation in ASD is very monotonous, almost robotic. But there are also claims um, that are the opposite, so that there's very melodic, sing-songy intonation in ASD. And some studies have actually found evidence for both within one group of subjects. Now, I think it's a good time also to mention that these studies and a lot of the evidence we have is um, speech by children or adolescents and sometimes both together in the same study. That has its own problems, uh, having broad age ranges, different stages of psycho psychological and linguistic development. Um, so we avoided that by just testing adults. Just keep that in mind for comparison of ours with previous studies. So we have limited and contradictory evidence on the intonation style of speakers with ASD. Um, and there are some reasons for that. I just mentioned age, um, but there are three further reasons I'd like to discuss now. One potential reason is uh, variability and individual specificity. That just means that any group of speakers diagnosed with ASD is bound to be very heterogeneous. There's a broad range of symptoms and severities and almost by definition, individuals with ASD tend to be autistic in their very own way, in an idiosyncratic way. So it's really important to take into account individual specificity and to test um, and analyze data at the level of the individual. But this has not always been done in past research on speech or generally communication in autism. And if you just take average results um, across a group of speakers, the results can be very misleading because we can't assume that um, behavior will in a uniform fashion go in one direction and not, for example, towards two extremes of behavior. So it's important to analyze speech in detail and at the level of individual speakers. Um, it's also important to consider um, where the speech data comes from, how was it elicited and how natural is it. And in fact, uh, most of the speech data used in previous research is not based on free, spontaneous, natural language. Typically, subjects had to read out sentences or um, excerpts of text or they were recorded in structured doctor-patient interviews or sometimes structured um, conversation with an experimenter. And this is likely to greatly affect the intonation style of any speaker, no less so in the case of individuals with ASD, of course. And to avoid this problem, we investigated only spontaneous or semi-spontaneous task-oriented dialogue. And we did this in homogeneous diets, so it would be two people with autism um, talking with each other and in the control group, two controls talking to each other. 
Finally, there's the issue of measurement and analysis. Um, and so although we might have subjectively quite clear impressions um, and agreement on if something sounds melodic, uh, sing-songy or robotic monotonous, it's quite hard to actually capture that and use the right metrics. Um, what's been done in the past mainly is uh, long-term distributional measures of F0. And this is not about autism specifically, it's about intonation styles in different dialects, different languages, language acquisition and so on. So these long-term distributional measures include mean F0, pitch range, minima, maxima and so on. And they do a decent job, but they might not be quite enough to get a clear picture. And we've shown this in a previous uh, paper that's referenced at the bottom here. Um, we created some stereotypical extreme examples of uh, robotic and sing-songy speech, which could not actually be distinguished um, by just long-term distributional measures in themselves. So we are um, proposing a new method of analysis to capture intonation styles which um, along two dimensions, which we term wiggliness and spaciousness. And this is also how we will present our results here. But um, we have also measured mean of zero and pitch range for comparison with previous studies. And to anticipate that here, pitch range delivered similar results to our method of wiggliness and spaciousness, um, which in a way validates our new approach. Um, but also our approach seemed to give a clearer picture here. Um, and when we tested mean F0, that actually did not seem to be a good metric for capturing intonation styles. And you can find details in the paper. But to the method that we're proposing, uh, these two dimensions of wiggliness and spaciousness, the main idea here is to capture the dynamics of F0 and to use these two dimensions to get a clearer picture. So for wiggliness, all we do is we take an excerpt of speech that is um, the pitch is hand corrected, smoothed and then stylized to a um, resolution of two semitones. And these contours are then um, an automatic procedure counts the number of turning points where the F0 changes um, direction, so to speak. And these, the number of these turning points is counted and divided by the duration of the pitch object to give us our wiggliness um, measure, which is supposed to give us just an idea of the liveliness of the intonation in one sense. And this is complemented by the spaciousness measure, which is in, in a sense a measure of just excursion. Um, so we take the um, slope between different turning points, calculate that in semitones, and the two largest excursions, we take the average of them, and that's our spaciousness measure. And we use that on the following speech data for um, the current study. We elicited speech through map tasks, giving us semi-spontaneous task-oriented dialogue. We recorded 28 native speakers of German in two groups, and uh, the speakers in the ASD group had all been diagnosed with Asperger syndrome, meaning they were high functioning, they had average or above average intelligence, and they had no language delay in childhood. And our control group was matched to that ASD group for gender, age, and IQ. And we analyzed um, approximately five minutes of speech per speaker. And this brings us straight to the results. Um, so we have spaciousness here on the y-axis, uh, the maximum excursion um, kind of measure, and wiggliness on the x-axis, slope changes. Um, and this is a group means for starters, ASD in blue, control in green. So what you can see is that the ASD group shows a more wiggly and more spacious intonation style, um, which gives an idea of a tendency towards more sing-songy intonation. But as I have mentioned, it's important to look at individual speakers as well. So we'll, of course, do that next. And it turns out in this case, actually, the general pattern that we see across speakers holds true if we um, take this perspective. For example, um, the speakers with the five highest spaciousness values are all from the ASD group, and five out of the six wiggliest speakers are also from the ASD group. Whereas the five lowest spaciousness um, values, those speakers come from the control group, and the four speakers with the lowest wiggliness are also in the control group. So you can see these tendencies. But individual differences are clear. There's a lot of variability. There's considerable overlap between the two groups. There isn't a cloud of control behavior here and ASD behavior here and a clear line between them. That is not what we see. Also, you see here um, individual speaker means represented through different icons. 
Um, so females have circles and males have triangles. You can see that we have more males than females. We have a ratio of three to one, which represents um, also the, the ratio, the incidence of diagnosis in the real world. Um, so it's a little tricky to compare males and females, but we've done our best. You can read details in the paper. And even if we com try to compensate for the different number of speakers, we find that this effect, this group difference is much stronger for male than for female speakers. I'll get back to that at the end. But overall, the trend is clear and it goes in one direction. Uh, the speakers from the ASD group tend to have a more sing-songy, more melodic intonation style than controls. And I'll quickly take us back to the um, examples of speech that I played at the beginning. So you can compare them. Um, because you've heard them, we'll listen to them again and to match that to the wiggliness, spaciousness values and where they'd lie in our graph. So I'll start with the second example I played you, which was Temple Grandin, the English example. I'll play that again. We've got to work on developing all these different kinds of minds. And one of the things that's driving me really crazy is I travel around and I do autism meetings. So this is the light blue dot here, um, this excerpt. It's not just these eight seconds to analyze one minute for these two example speakers. Um, and it falls nicely within the region of like the more sing-songy um, speakers from our sample, um, which to me makes a lot of sense from how it sounds subjectively. It sounds quite melodic, a lot of spaciousness, a lot of wiggliness. Now the other example, Greta Thunberg's, you can see here light blue at the bottom actually falls quite low here, um, quite low wiggliness and more a lower spaciousness than any of the examples we have in our data. I'll play that again. Jag, jag ser saker väldigt mycket svartvita och de flesta säger att ja, det gör ingenting om man gör lite så och det ingenting är svartvitt. So this is interesting. I mean, we don't have anything like that, especially from our ASD group. And if we would have, it would be tempting to say, okay, here's an example of a monotonous robotic style speech. But of course, um, let me be clear. So these two examples, Greta Thunberg, Temple Grandin, they're not part of our study itself. They're just, um, it's a bonus for the talk, as it were. Um, so we have to be cautious with interpretation. We only have one minute of speech per speaker. And of course, there's other issues. They're different languages. But this is also interesting, of course, if you think of um, the state of the art. What we have in studies is just evidence from English to a huge extent, and then there's some Hebrew, some Hindi. But on German, for example, we just don't know. Um, the other thing is there are different speech styles. Again, it brings us back to previous studies and how comparable different speech styles are. Uh, here, Temple Grandin's excerpt comes from a TED talk. Greta Thunberg's comes from a um, TV interview. And of course, that can make for a different intonation style. And it's tempting for me to think that, for example, this low, low spaciousness, no, low wiggliness, relatively monotone example that we have of Greta Thunberg might have something to do with um, the setting. So if you have quite a rehearsed, constrained, stressful situation, it might push you towards a more monotonous speech style. But of course, you know, we can't be sure. It's also possible that there is a subset of uh, speakers with ASD also in German that show this very monotonous speech style. We just haven't found it because we haven't got enough data. So to conclude, we looked at the intonation style of uh, German adults with ASD. And what we found is that they, there's a clear tendency towards a more sing-songy, more melodic intonation style than for controls. And we have found no evidence of a monotonous robotic type intonation style. And this difference between groups was stronger for males than for females. Now, in the paper, um, we go into a bit more detail about possible reasons for this, namely social camouflaging, meaning that there is the idea that um, high-functioning individuals with autism compensate for their symptoms and adapt or try to blend in with the majority. And this is usually done more successfully by female speakers. And this might be the case that this is one example in the domain of prosody of fitting in or camouflaging. Finally, very importantly, individual differences are important. We have clear evidence of that in, in this study. Um, it's crucial to analyze because half of the individuals with ASD in, this, uh, in our study fall well within the range of behavior by the control group. And there's a lot of variability. There's a broad range. There's considerable overlap between the different groups. So there's a whole big spectrum across the two different groups of um, ASD and control speakers. Okay, this is uh, all we have time for. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for listening and for watching in this case. 
I'm very happy um, for any discussion, any questions, any comments, and just get in touch by email, and then we can find a way to um, discuss together, whichever platform. Okay, thank you again.